The A380 has gained over 300 orders and 226 planes have been delivered. The plane has had a turbulent life, but there have been moments where the program has sprung a new lease of life by gaining a substantial order. We all know that Emirates has been pushing for the A380neo for quite a while now, and the CEO of Emirates, Tim Clark, has said that if Airbus do decide to go ahead with the A380neo program, then Airbus could see a big order of around 150 planes. So we know that there is a market out there if Airbus do decide to go ahead even though it's small, and whether or not airlines will buy into it, I highly doubt it. But should Airbus cave in to the demands of their biggest customer? Should they make the A380neo or even the A380-900 which will be a stretched version? Well, it's actually quite hard to say, but if you look at indications in the market, then the probability will be almost zero. Now, I'd imagine the best chance an A380neo has is the secondary market sales as the first leases start to come up. Given the A380's limited capabilities as a cargo plane, we'll have to wait and see what happens to the first planes being delivered to the major carriers like Emirates, British Airways and etc. If the secondary sales are strong in places, originally predicted to be A380 buyers, we could see more airlines willing to take on the huge expense of buying the super jumbos. But the big issue with the A380 is that it only makes sense at slot restricted airports, of which there are only few. In most markets, airline can make more money by using smaller aircraft in multiple frequencies or flying much smaller aircraft directly to secondary airports. Not only is this strategy efficient in fleet commonality, but it also adds redundancy to the route network, and it gives consumers more choice that may suit their exact preferences better and people pay more and choose airlines for exact fits. But bringing an A380neo into the market is not a decision that Airbus can make on their own. In order for it to be a success against the new long-range planes, the A380neo must have new engines that would improve fuel burn by at least 10% over the current A380 engines. This means that engine manufacturers like General Electric, Pratt & Whitney and Rolls-Royce must create a new engine matching the specifications needed for the A380neo. The engine manufacturers will have to spend a significant amount of R&D money to develop such an engine. The engine companies may be reluctant to risk the return of the R&D funds and turn a profit if the A380neo has similar reception in the market. So there will be a neo until an engine manufacturer makes a commitment to develop the engine. Now the A380-900 is a case which we know won't happen, well at least not for now. Given the current passenger market, there's only a few routes that can support the plane and this is clear by the poor market penetration of the 800. To justify an even larger 900 variant, there would need to be a huge increase in the passenger numbers on the current routes or a sharp increase in congestion at airports currently served by the A380. Since neither traffic growth nor unacceptable airport congestion appears likely in the near future, it's unlikely that there will be an immediate need for an A380-900. If sufficient growth occurs in the future, the basic A380 frame will be over 20 years old and will probably be obsolete compared to new designs. And it seems like the A380 appears to have come to the market well ahead of its time. So there you go captains, a few interesting thoughts regarding the A380+, Plus, the Neo, the 900 or whatever you want to call it. Now if you have any thoughts or opinions regarding the Neo, then let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my fellow friends, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.